Well, hey neighbors, welcome to the shed shop. I am about to tear down a subscriber neighbor's purchase. Rob Weaver, are you there, neighbor? You guys seem a little tall today. Rob said I look tired in my videos and he thinks I need to say fuck his salt and go to sleep. <laughs> That's essentially what this man said to me. You should get some rest. You look real tired, Chainsaw Redeemer, Matthew. And I said, I am tired, neighbor. That's why I got all these damn uh, Tiger Balm and Biofreeze patches all over my damn shoulders and back. Because I need to tinker. I can't sleep because I'm in pain. And my brain won't shut the hell off. And all those deep breaths... Sorry, neighbors. I have to. I'm in pain. And there's a lot of pressure on my lungs. Anyways, if this is your first time clicking on one of these videos, don't leave. If you're still here after a minute and five seconds, well, stay the whole damn time. I got a beautiful story for you. I got testimony for you. I got struggles for you. I got nightmares for you. Right now, I have a filthy, vile, dirty, disgusting... Steel 028 in the back of my van with my I have 064 fever neighbors. I also realized tonight. Neighbor Ace Arborist, your damn backpack blower still out there on the table, neighbor. So sorry. I haven't gotten to it yet. Fucking weather's being shitty. Hopefully it's Sunday now. Saturday night, 111, so it's technically Sunday morning at 111 a.m. Central time, anyways. 2.11 Eastern time. Uh, 12.11 for you, Rob Weaver. Uh, anyways, neighbors. Uh, Ace the Arborist and other neighbors. I have MS. 200 T. Fever. Neighbors. I want to buy another 200 T. And rebuild it on the channel. But I don't have the money right now. So I'll stick with the fever. Kind of like this 064 fever I've had for weeks. Whilst that freaking saw is stuck sitting in the back of my van. Because I'm in such a tiny space. Don't have time. Don't have room. Too much pain. Anyways, this is about my subscriber neighbor. So here is the deal. Where are we at neighbors? Like the video. Subscribe to the damn channel. Most importantly... Do you know YouTube has an algorithm that says if you don't comment on my videos, they will not show them to new people. So neighbors, comment. Thank you, Daryl Johnson, for all your fucking comments, neighbors, and the fact that you appreciate and understand I cannot respond to every single one, but I'll at least try and like them and give you a heart. And when I do that, if I give you a heart, neighbors, I'm not going in my notifications and saying heart all my shit without me reading it. You know you can do that as a creator on YouTube. I won't do you neighbors that dirty. A lot of times I like and heart shit. And then three or four days later, I comment on it for you. I reply to you. The reason is, I want you to know I've read your comment, but I'm too damn tired. I want to love you better by waiting and giving you a better response in a few days. Because essentially, I filter it by the ones I haven't responded to yet. And so I can like and heart your comment without responding and then comment later. That being said, comment on the damn video, please. If you're new here, trust me. You ain't gonna find another damn channel out there like this, neighbors. I got my fatty bundings relaxing here. Uh, because I'm raising my voice, she's getting a little uh, anxious. Uh, I've got her bone in here. I think she wants to take it outside and bury it. Should I let her go bury her $10 bone? Do you want to go outside, fatty buntings? I will pause you, neighbors, and find out what she wants. Because it takes a minute sometimes since she can't use words. Hopefully not too many bugs come in to seek, kill, and destroy us. But since I have to go dig your saw out of my van, Rob Weaver, I'll leave the door open until I'm done telling however hell long my too long of a story is, neighbors, but I hurt. And I guess for now, I just want to talk. <sighs> sorry, my pain. Not sorry. I won't edit this shit because part of it is let's share each other's burdens. You like my hair, neighbors? Uh, yeah, I got badass hair and I know it. <laughs> but as you can see it's hard to maintain and it gets messy if you don't maintain it but the messiness is kind of cool because it's like you see how curly my chin is naturally anyways moving on let's get back on point 
Okay. Rob Weaver has told me a story. I did you dirty story. Beautiful, right? Told me how he did his mother-in-law dirty. And I'm going to tell you that story. But first, let me remind you. We're going to be tearing down a steel 028 in this video. The beautiful thing is, though there's likely nothing wrong with this 028 top end, Rob Weaver didn't care if he got a Frankensteel, which essentially is a bunch of different steel 028 parts put together as a whole saw. But I think maybe he chose this one because he knows for me, even though it might not be the best financial decision for me in certain ways, it is the best financial decision for me because it's less work. And he doesn't have to get a Franken saw. It would have been nice to have an 028 Super in that van with that pile because I think all those saws are okay. They came from an old man. But Rob Weaver has an 028 Super. And he said he's been talking to his saw, his 028 Super. And that saw has said, I got all these other saws around me. But I don't have a twin, Rob Weaver. Why would you do me that dirty for this long? And not give me an 028 Super Twin? And so, Rob Weaver said, Chainsaw Redeemer, would you be willing to let me buy a saw from you? I said, shit, yeah, neighbor! You're going to be the first official subscriber neighbor that was a subscriber neighbor before a customer neighbor to buy my chit. And then the same fucking day, literally, that he put his $100 deposit, Adam Hayes officially paid for his chainsaw, his 266SE Vintage Saw, which because it's 110,000 degrees, uh, the temperature of, of pre-hill, I guess, in San Antonio, Texas, uh, he can't run his damn 266. But he did start it up. It's running rich anyways. Uh, so, Rob Weaver decided... Since I don't have an 028 Super, and I haven't come across any 028 Supers to seem that seem like they have a good top end, I've told Rob Weaver, this is one of the options, and he chose this option. Take one of those filthy, vile, disgusting chainsaws that that man has owned uh, for 30 some odd years. One of those 028s. There's two of them, neighbors. Does anybody else want to buy the other one? You can. $325. Redeemed on the channel. That's an 028. Rob Weaver has already overpaid for a saw, but that's because we changed a lot of chip. Anyways, we're not going to talk about that right now. Just, I see you, Rob Weaver. He sent a couple of payments today. Third payment, fourth payment. I'm like, what the hell are you doing, dude? It's my day off. Okay, I see you, though. And he bought my McCulloch 1010. So, but then he also, oh, told him I don't have a cover, Rob. I'll have to find you one. He donated... His own damn cover, neighbors. Went on eBay, bought the chip, shipped it to my house. That's what he did. Said, here's my cover, neighbor. You don't have to pay for it. I'll pay for it, and I'll pay full price for this all. I said, shit, who the hell are you, neighbor? Thanks a lot. That's awesome. Thank you for buying my chip. And on top of it, donating so I can make full profit off your chip. The conversions I have to make. He said, hey, if you're converting a regular 028 that probably has nothing wrong with it that you could sell for 325 here's your cover, neighbor. You're going to put a meteor top end brand new on it for me? <laughs> here's your extra payments, neighbor. Here's your cover, neighbor. Don't worry about it, Chainsaw Redeemer. Okay, now let's get to the story. The I did you dirty story. Let's talk about how this channel incorporates the Bible, hell, heaven, people, shittiness, filthiness, vileness, burdens, challenges, struggles, Pain, addictions, everything else. Chainsaws, redneck shit, lawnmowers, tillers, trees, grass, fatty bunting dog, turtles, cows, and so fucking much more. This channel brings you all that, and it brings you building chainsaws for subscriber neighbors. This is a community of support, and on this channel, one of the things I say a lot is I did you dirty. I'll come on here and I'll tell you when I've done you dirty. And Rob Weaver saw one of my videos and he had done his mother-in-law dirty. And after seeing my video, his guilt turned to conviction. We will talk about that. The difference one day, neighbors, not right now. Damn, I might have to go get a drink. Holy shit, do I have a dry mouth in this shed right now. 
Woo! I want to open the door. It is stuffy in here, neighbors. Uh, anyways, uh, I should have not turned the AC up. Damn it. Um, we got that meteor top end. Let me show you what else we got for the saw, and then I'll tell you the story of the I did you dirty for Rob Weaver. We're gonna put hot weight crankshaft seals in his saw. Uh, Rob Weaver. Uh, your bearings are probably fine, but I thought since we need to show people how the hell to do bearings in this thing the right way and the redneck way, I've got two of them. I wanted to do one the redneck way that most people can do at home or they can go to Goodwill and buy the shit to do it like a heat plate, okay? And I can teach you how to do that the redneck way if you don't have specialty tools. But I can also tell you about how to hell ditch it right here. Says to do it. Okay, and it tells you exactly what you need to do with your bearing and your crankshaft or your crankcase. What temperature to heat it, how to heat it, why to heat it, what to do, what tool to use to press your bearings in. I have that tool on the way, neighbors. I'm just waiting on it. It's been on back order for freaking months of how to properly press those bearings in. I have the tool to do it on the way. I want to show you on the channel. I'm hoping Rob Saw, anyways, will be the one that I do that with. Uh, Your bearings... If they come, neighbor, great. We'll replace them. If not, and your bearings are good, we're going to keep them, and we're going to run with it. And then when you send your other 028 Super back in or in for the refreshing, neighbor, for its uh redemption, because it's served you so well, you want to allow it to be redeemed and refreshed and revitalized and brought back to full life again uh, so it can serve you until you die at your age. If we redeem that fucking soul and it's lasted you as long as it has, it's going to serve you until you die. And then I guess neighbor Sarah's future husband will have to run that shit. Right? Okay. Because his daughter is young. And one day in the future, 30 years down the road, that's all. We'll be good to go for them to cut wood. Right? Anyways, moving on, neighbors. Okay. So we're going to replace that shit. Uh, the meteor top end. We've got our cover. Uh, and then the, the we'll do a fuel line. I've got a fuel line from CTS Aftermarket. Uh, they don't make OEMs anymore. They're obsolete. Um, we'll do an aftermarket pickup body. And like we do on all our saws, a fuel pickup body. We'll put an NGK BPMR 7A spark plug in that saw. Um, brand new. And uh, we'll put our homemade tank vent on it. If the tank vent on it is bad. Uh, neighbor Jesse. I'll see you, neighbor. Um, okay, he's letting me know about our bearings. <laughs> I hope to bring you who Neighbor Jesse is and his website and everything. I've just started doing business with him. And I don't have a website. And though I want one and though I want to sell parts, I really largely do it for therapy. And because I want to be able to have my parts cheaper uh, or free. And so if I sell enough parts, the parts I put in saws don't cost me money. So I can actually make money on my saws instead of doing it. Just to do it and not make money. I need to make money and stay sober tinkering on shit at the same time. I'm not getting enough business outside of building my own saws. Damn. Uh, I'll have to look at him. Uh, what he's saying later. I, I, that That's part of it, guys. I get distracted because I want to know what the hell you're saying to me when you message me. Whilst I'm taking videos. Okay, so moving on. I did you dirty. 13 minutes already. I know I've done you dirty. Let me tell you. See, I'm trying to get the process right. We're going to tear his saw down. Okay, there's no diagnostics because we're putting a brand new top end on it. The only diagnostics will essentially be figuring out what needs replaced. And if our top end is bad, figuring out what the hell caused it to go bad so that this top end doesn't go bad because of the same thing. But when you're tearing us all completely down and rebuilding it, uh, the shit we should be replacing, we should have no problems. Our top end should not go bad. If we do it right, we should be okay. Now, things happen like mystery third clips, like a third arm in our 361. Watch the stories. Maybe I'll make that the end clip for this since it just happened. I don't know, neighbors. One more thing before I tell you I did you dirty. This is going to be the only video you get on this story. Neighbor Kyle, you'll like this. My best effort will be made to bring you this entire story. I will upload it to the boob tube. Damn. Uh, now I've got neighbor Carrie. Wow. I was thinking about your 338 today, neighbor Carrie, and how I hope to tear it down after this one, honestly. Might take footage, might not, but I forget. I think I found a damn scorched motor on that thing, and that's why I told you it wasn't worth res uh, redeeming um, that little top handle there. We'll have to find out. Anyways, uh, so uh, back on track. 
I can't believe Carrie's texting me at 2 o'clock in the morning. He lives uh, a mile away. <laughs> I should be like, neighbor, I got my 575 here that you uh, surrendered that 570 we couldn't find a piston for. Uh, you want to cut them stumps with it? Let's see if it'll run a fucking 32 with ported muffler. Anyways, back on topic. Rob Weaver and his 028. Uh, yeah, so the footage is probably all going to come aside from this one video you're watching right now. Weeks or potentially months from now. You're not getting that footage until Rob Weaver gets his saw beyond this video. So essentially, the confessions at the parts washer. Uh, the reassembly. Um, the will it be redeemed? Is it redeemed? Etc. Etc. First time to cut. Tachometer video if I do one. All that stuff will come to you at once. Which will be kind of cool. Because then you can sit there and say, whenever I got free time, oh, I want to watch the story. And then when you're at work, you, oh, shit, what happened? Did that saw run? Is everything okay? Blah, 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 blah. Is Chainsaw Redeemer dead? Did he quit? Did he give up? Did a new building come? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Is he an alien? Ooh. Did we touch the alien thing again? All right. Let's get to the I did you dirty for reals, guys. Okay. So I'm going to do my best to tell a story. And Rob Weaver is going to correct anything I F up in the comments down below. FYI, Rob Weaver professes King Jesus. And we've had some conversations. Tonight I called him or I messaged him a video and I said, Rob Weaver, are you there, neighbor? I simply want to know if you're awake right now at 1124 on Saturday night, which is 1024 for him. And he said, I'm alive. Did you want to call? And so I called him and we talked for an hour about a bunch of different stuff. And I learned more stuff about him. And it was beautiful. I learned about the fact that he was in the Navy. And I hope to tell you about that in the next video, because right now it's just the I did you dirty. I'm going to tell you about his grandfather, and I'm going to tell you about him and him being in the Navy, what he did, what his grandfather did, uh, the emotional stories, why he was inspired by his grandfather to join the Navy, what motivated him, and everything else. But you have to stay tuned, goddammit. Okay, so if you haven't subscribed to this channel and you're still here, you better go hit the damn bell notification so you don't miss the damn upcoming videos. Like this video. Comment down below so the algorithm doesn't hide this badass content from other people. Okay, so I've taken notes because I'm trying to get the chit right. Uh, essentially, here is the story. Let's see if we can get it the best we can. Uh, Rob Weaver is a 55-year-old man that works full-time still. Uh, and he likes tinkering on saws. Um, he has a mother-in-law that's in her 70s. And essentially, he worked on her car. He uh, replaced her radiator. And he's like me. Oftentimes, when you do a job like that, you might as well spend the extra 100 bucks in effort it takes to replace hoses, thermostat, all the other little things of that system. Like when you do your ACIS system on your car, neighbors, if you got a minivan like mine, do freaking everything you can while you're in there. O-rings, gaskets, blah, 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 blahs. Because when you do what me and Rob Weaver did and say, ah, I'm tired, the job's hard, I work all day, etc., etc., it's good enough. I don't need to replace those wearable parts this time. My channel is exemplary. To this fact, I have not replaced stupid little things on chainsaws that have caused major problems. Stupid little $2 parts sometimes, like a spring, a clutch spring, devastated a chainsaw because the clutch is rubbing the sprocket at idle, causing heat and cause the saw to blow up. Yeah, neighbors, a $2 freaking clutch spring will do that to your saw if you don't replace them. It's a wearable part. They need to be maintained. Okay, so... He puts the radiator in and decides, even though his standard practice is to always replace the thermostat and all the hoses whilst he replaces a radiator. He didn't do it this time because <laughs> he said, ah, I'm tired. It'll be okay. Well, his mother-in-law's car has sprung a major leak after the job. <laughs> and Rob Weaver says, well, mother-in-law... Take that chit to the dealer. I don't have time to deal with it. I don't want to deal with it. I'm mad. Screw it. So essentially, what has happened, Rob Weaver has cut a corner and he acknowledges this fact. Uh, the next thing that happens is the mother-in-law takes the car to the dealer and the dealer diagnoses the car and says, ma'am, you just have leaky hoses. <laughs> so, 
which he essentially, I'm presuming, tells Rob. This is what they said, son-in-law. Uh, her name is Marla, he tells me, by the way. Um, and he, he plays through all these different details, like he's ignoring her safety, he's ignoring the safety of others, uh, he's ignoring her age. He's ignoring the fact that she could break down somewhere where there's not cell phone range. And she's a 70-something-year-old woman that would be stuck on the side of the road where nobody might potentially stop and help her. And he plays through all these different scenarios that he's like, you know, these are all the things I neglected to think about. When I said, fuck it, it's good enough. Take it to the dealer. And essentially, so he tells me, you know, I was subscribed, I was subscribed to your channel. I will, when I go get his saw, have to get a drink. I'm out of gum, damn it. I've been having dry mouth lately, and I don't know why. Maybe it's because I drank a two liter of pop today because I'm at my healthy wage goal. And uh, even though I've got to drink two pounds of water to flush all that shit out faster in case they need a reway, uh, it was worth it. Uh, anyways, um, damn it. Chit, neighbor, so sorry. <sighs> Rob Weaver saw mother in law name. All the things he disregarded. My mouth is dry. I'm going to have to get a drink. <laughs> See me, neighbors? <laughs> I'm not going to edit that shit out. Neighbor Kyle. Uh, thanks for our conversation the other night, neighbor. I enjoyed your company and the new uh, lemon beer you brought over that we tried. It was nice. Not too bad. Don't love beer, but I like beer. Uh, anyways. um. So Rob had told me he'd been subscribed to my channel already. And because he was frustrated with that job whilst his mother-in-law's car sat in the driveway... And had already been to the dealer. And he told her, well, you're just going to have to pay him to fix that shit. Uh, he's sitting at his little workbench where he tinkers on his saws and whatnot. And um, he says, sometimes I watch videos whilst I'm sitting there. He says, I have my feet up, sitting in my comfy chair. Uh, getting ready to tinker on some shit. And I'm watching a video. He says, your video, of all videos, I was watching one of your videos. And you was talking about how you did somebody dirty and you're making it right. Light bulb, conviction, guilt, whatever the fuck you want to call it, neighbors. I call it conviction of the Holy Spirit is what it's got to be. Conviction of whatever creator created us has caused us when we do something shitty to another human being that we love, even if we don't love them, we love them just because they're another human being. Uh, we have this thing that happens that we're like, well, hell, should I really allow that? That's bad behavior. I shouldn't do that. Even though life is hard. So, that's what happened to Rob Weaver. My subscriber neighbor. Your neighbor. Our friend neighbor. He's a whoppy tack, whoppy click, whoppy lick a lick. Rob Weaver, can you mention your name in the comments? So everybody knows what the hell your weird little fucking tag is now. Even though my phone says Rob Weaver up here. But then when it's down here on the YouTube, it says whip a ticka lick a rick a rack a rick a rick a. Whatever it is. I know what it is, but I don't know what the hell it is because it's weird. Anyways, um... He says, he says, I was like, well, hell, I've done my mother-in-law dirty. I didn't consider this, 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 and this, all the things we went to. Her age, if she broke down, if she didn't have service, how much she'd have to pay for a tow truck, all this and this and this and this and this. And he said he saw my video and that's when he had his conviction. And uh, he tells me, he essentially says, well, shit, I got to do it, right? He says, mother-in-law, I've done you dirty, and i got to make it right. And so, essentially, he went to make it right and do the job right this time and replace the hoses and stuff. And, well, he finishes the job, and lo and behold, neighbors, should we turn to the next page of the story, even though those new t details are on the previous page, and I recollect them. Ah. Oh. There's a leak. So this man went and made it right because he felt convicted that he did it wrong and did his mother-in-law dirty by telling her, screw it, get a tow truck, have the dealer fix it, all this stuff. I don't want to mess with it. And then he goes and says, well, shit, that was wrong of me. Let me make it right. And then he redoes the job and the radiator has been punctured by his frustrations. If y'all ever work on cars... 
Putting in a radiator Ooh, can be a nightmare on smaller cars, on newer cars. Oh, my goodness, with the condenser right there. Everything else. Yeah, so anyways, he's acknowledged that he punctured the radiator somehow. Uh, I think it was he even told me. But anyways, I'm not going to get into that. That's not the point. And so with that, he was like, fuck it. Mother-in-law, get a tow truck and just pay the dealer. I'm done with it. And then again, he had all those things playing in his head. And that's when he saw my video. Of, ah, said, I did you dirty. I'm going to make it right. He cannot remember the specific video, but that's pointless. So he said, mother-in-law. Well, chip. I'm still doing you dirty. Basically, for the third time now. In this car situation. But I'm going to make it right. Don't call the tow truck. Basically, his dude on it overnight. Don't call the tow truck, mother-in-law. Don't take it to the dealer. 55-year-old, full-time working son-in-law, Rob Weaver, has assured you the first time he was going to fix your car. And he fucked it up and cut a corner. And then the second time, he said, I'm going to make it right, mother-in-law. I shouldn't have left those hoses off. So sorry. I even let you take your shit to the dealer. Because I knew I should have looked at what the hell I did. Because I knew I didn't do the job right. So sorry, mother-in-law. But I'll make it right now. And then he tries to make it right. And fucks the shit up again. Supernatural. Coincidence. Sabotage. Alien experiment. Government experiment. King Jesus chastising. I think me and Rob Weaver agree. It's probably chastisement. And the Bible says, despise not the chastening of the Lord. The Lord chastens those whom he loves. And so if it is chastisement, that means the Lord of the universe, Yeshua HaMashiach, and him crucified, loves Rob Weaver. <laughs> Interesting. Do you think he loves you, neighbors? He says he does. He hates your sin, but he loves you. He hates my sin, but he loves me. At least that's what the Bible says. Is that fucking real or not? God damn it. I don't know, neighbors. I seem to believe it is, even though I say, God damn it. Watch the channel more to find out why I say, God damn it. Why I praise King Jesus. Neighbors, I'm not God damning it, the God of the Bible. Understand that. Moving on back to the story. What are we here about? This channel, this man said, I was watching your video. This 55 year old man was watching the 37 year old disabled tiger bomb patch all over, squeaky chair in a shed that's overheated, not properly insulated, messy as hell, too small. I was watching you in your little shed out in Lewisburg, Tennessee. And I got a conviction that I was still doing my mother-in-law filthy, vile, dirty, and fucking disgusting. Even though he didn't say fucking. The way he emphasized his words, that's what he was saying. I did her fucking disgusting. And I knew it wasn't right. And so I told her, let me make it right. And the conclusion of the story right now, at least, is what did I write? Everything is good, neighbors. He fixed his mom's car, mother-in-law, as he says. It's mom. Fuck it. Who cares? He fixed mom's car. And she's good to go. So he accepted the shittiness of the situation of even though I did everything right this time. One little fuck up. Something got punctured in the radiator. And now I've got to do it yet again. I said fuck it at first. But I accepted my conviction when I received it. Even though I knew I might have begrudgingly went back yet again to do it right. I know the right thing is to go back and do it right. No matter what I feel like. And he did. And that's beautiful. And that's the point. When I say I did you dirty, I don't mean to keep doing you dirty. Sorry, I did you dirty, but I'm telling you I did you dirty so I can make it right. That's what happened. As a believer, he said, shit, mommy, I've sinned against you. I violated multiple commandments. Sorry, King Jesus. By sinning against my mother and dishonoring my mother and father, I've dishonored you. I'm going to make it right. King Jesus said, okay, but you cut a corner the first time. Bad Rob Weaver! That's what happened. Bad Rob Weaver! Shame on you! You know better. Rob knew. He said, I knew not to uh, leave old hoses on that chit. I always replace them. I know too. I've done it. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. 85% of the time, if your shit ain't ripped, it might be okay. 
But that 15% of the time, the job doesn't work out with used hoses, reusing clamps, all those wearable parts. Shit, neighbors, it's frustrating if you don't do it. A lot of times you say, F it, I'm done, I quit, I walk away. But also then you walk back. And essentially that is, I've sinned against your mommy. I'm going to make it right. Please forgive me. He tries to make it right. And Jesus smacks him. Whilst he tries to make it right. I don't understand. Why is King Jesus slapping the shit out of him for doing the right thing? Well, because he said, despise not the chastening of the Lord. For the Lord chastens those whom he loves. And it tells people that they should bring their child up in the ways of the Lord. And, and spare not the child, the rod. Literally smacking your fucking child with a rod. The Bible says not to spare. Please understand. I know we said that's abuse today. But essentially what it means metaphorically is you have to discipline. Whatever your discipline looks like in your life, fine. It's not my job to judge you. I know what I believe is okay and not okay when it comes to child discipline. Rob Weaver was disciplined. And at first he said, that's not fair. Fuck you. I was trying to do the right thing and you're telling me. I said I did wrong. I'm going to make it right. There should be no punishment because I've admitted I've done wrong and I'm doing the right thing to make it right. But yet there was punishment. And initially he said, I'm going to quit. I'm not going to do this. Screw it. But then he had conviction whilst watching this channel and said, damn it, mommy, <laughs> I'm still committing the same damn sin. Apparently, I didn't learn my lesson. Or did I? And he did because he took that smack on the hand eventually after thinking about it and said, okay, I still got to make it right. No matter how hard it is, no matter how much discipline I have to go through to make it right. It's worth the discipline to make it right because I love my mother-in-law. That's what Rob Weaver basically said. In my words, again, he has said, yeah, I think you've got the gist of it and it will be okay if you word it this way. And so again, whip attack a ricker, lacker, lacker, Rob Weaver. Go down in the comments if I fucked up the story. I am going to take this, pause you neighbors, go get a drink from my parchment, get his saw, and we're going to tear it apart. And really, uh, there will be some education maybe along the way. But mostly it's going to be finding out what the hell this saw needs, talking a little bit, and seeing how nasty, disgusting, and vile this thing is. And then if it's not all burnt up and scorched and everything else, I'll have hope of the 064. But since Carrie Thornton has texted me, again, as believing in a divine fucking creator, I got to fucking believe my neighbor down the road has messaged me this hour, and it said something about a good deal. So he's sending me a good deal on chainsaws that he found on Marketplace or something that I've probably already seen. But either way, I love when people do that because I don't always have time to scan the market for good deals. I cannot buy it. But that leads me to believe I need to tear his saw down after Rob's. So neighbors, do you mind? Uh, you can go get popcorn, uh, snacks, whatever you like. Some pop, some wine, some whiskey, <laughs> uh, some beer, uh, chips, potato chips. I got Pringles. Does anybody want salt and vinegar or uh, cheddar and sour cream Pringles? Uh, I've got Reese's Thins. I've got uh, Orville Rettenbacher's natural uh, flavored butter, uh, not butter, natural uh, flavored popcorn. I've got cereal, oatmeal, tuna fish. You want a pork loin? <laughs> okay, neighbors, you go get your snacks and whatever the hell you need to get through the rest of the probably 30 or 40 minutes it's going to take to tear this 028 down. Since I'm really just tearing this down and put it in boxes, it shouldn't take us too, too long. I got my box here to put my motor in if it's good so that I don't have to uh, let it get destroyed and we'll package it up for now because we can either sell it or put it on another 028 in the future. So, y'all, go get your chip. Get ready. This is the intermission, damn it, neighbors. I'm gonna go get his saw. Whew. Okay, I have one more thing before I turn you down to the bench and show you how disgusting this saw is. Now, it has been over an hour since I talked to Rob Weaver. And I know it is late, and he's a 55-year-old man, so he probably by now may be sleeping, even though it seems. Even the guys 20 and 30 years older than me are up late at night until 2, 3 in the morning. Most tinkerers of any sort seem to be uh, night owls that don't usually sleep a ton of hours as well. Anyways, uh, so now I'm challenged with, I did not realize I've got a metal tank out there non-chain brake, uh, older style 028, and a plastic tank uh, with a chain brake, uh, newer style 028. And 
we're putting a super top end on it, and I know he doesn't necessarily can, can, uh, care about some of those parts, but my thing is, I want to ask him, do you want this saw or this saw, and I can't, and so I had to use my best judgment. And part of that judgment is, I know my nightmare is working with those older O28s. It's like the factory. They just grabbed random hardware and threw them shits together. It's crazy. The amounts of different bolt heads that are on those things. And I know my neighbor's a tinkerer. And I know I don't like to grab 15 different screwdrivers to work on my saw. And so I'm hoping this plastic tank newer model. Because I took a quick look at that one. And I already saw three different screws holding the recoil on. A flat head. Uh, a hex head and a T27 head. And I see that on old O28s. Like the early 1980 O28s. <sighs> Just mixed hardware. And so that's, there comes my burden because I'm like, well, shit, I don't want to make the wrong decision, but I can't put it on hold. I got to persevere and know that my neighbor's going to be fucking happy all the way and we can change this shit because that saw is just in my van. That being said, sorry, neighbors, I'm in a lot of pain, but I got to work. I'm going to turn you down to the bench, damn it, right after I get some gloves on. Neighbors, let's get to work, damn it. What the hell, Chainsaw Redeemer? There's no damn saw on your bench. What are you working on? This metal pan. Are you going to change your blade? Are you going to fix that gasket? Are you going to peel that sticker off that bag? Are you doing a hilly coil over there? What the hell is that thing in that bag? I've been watching a guy. I don't know shit about him other than I kind of like some of his videos. And I think he's kind of neat. That's what he does. He says, okay, saw. Let me back you up. Let's get real with the chip for a minute. Now, I cannot slam the saw as hard as he does because he's got a bench that moves up and down and it's got a plastic surface so he can slam a saw. But he'll say this on a Husqvarna. But for here, I've got to show you. Oh, wait a minute. Neighbors, do you realize whoosh, we're changing this to this? That's what we're working on. No diagnostics. Okay. Should I get some gloves on? I think I should. Do you know what I do to get my gloves on? Baby powder. Because it's cheap. Especially in the hot summer months when you change your gloves a lot. Because you got lots of customer neighbors coming through nonstop. Uh, and so you have to remove your gloves and your hands get sweaty and everything else. The baby powder helps get your gloves on. All right, so essentially, honestly, guys, we are just like right going to tear right through this saw. I wish I had music on. I've gotten to essentially tell you the beautiful story Rob Weaver told me of him saying, mother-in-law, I've done you dirty, but I'm going to make it right. Okay, uh, it's beautiful. The convictions, everything else. And Rob Weaver and I have talked a lot. I hope we get to talk more. Um, and again, essentially, you'll get this video, but the rest of his footage, neighbors, whatever I do get on camera, you guys won't get until he has... Uh, received his saw. Um, but I will bring it to you all at once as best I can. No promises, but that's what I want to do. Okay, so essentially the saw looks disgusting. Um, what I can tell you history on the saw, even though we're putting a brand new top end on it, because I have a lot of saws with the same history. I bought an 064. I have 064 fever neighbors. I also have 200 T fever neighbors uh we're hoping to get some uh footage of neighbor ace cutting with his 200t for you soon by the way guys and he's a he's a very high paying uh customer neighbor to the shed shop he's bought a lot of products um he's bought saw and other stuff okay so surprisingly even though we're going to replace that rim sprocket his sprocket doesn't look that bad i forget um uh damn it uh i think uh Ooh, boy, Rob and I talked about what pitch we're going on this. I think we're going three ace, and I have a brand new, um, I think, Oregon or Power Mate, brand new Oregon Power Mate um, sprocket for him. And so, that's what we'll do. I have a, a hardware container here for his saw's hardware that we're going to try and put everything in. Okay, neighbors, we'll do the best we can to get everything organized and keep it organized. And so y'all can kind of see how long the chip actually really takes. Okay, there's our clutch cover. It looks okay. It has the guide plate. Some have bumper strips. 
um, older covers have a god plate. I'm willing to bet this went actually to that other saw and that other one probably has the bumper strips because typically with the plastic tank, I see more often the bumper strips than I do the god plate. Surprisingly, still has a chain catch on it. I smell rancid gas now and uh, not chain catch, but these uh, chip, chip guards, uh, they don't make them anymore. You can sometimes find the aftermarket covers with these on them, but I don't know that you can find just these. So anyways, into the box of parts that needs clean. Let's get right to it. I've taken our barn chain off. This chain is 100% garbage. Um, but since it's what I'm working... Oh, shoot, my screw's not there anymore. I was going to say since it's what I'm working on, I'll hang it right here. You see where I'm pointing? I usually have a screw right down here. I did that. I beat my bench up with a hammer because I was pissed off about the 361 nightmare scenario. Okay, so I'm just going to hang the chip for now out of the way. Okay, because uh, that's not the bar he's getting. You'll have to stay tuned to find out what the hell kind of bar I give him. Am I going to give him a Chinese Raisman? Is he going to have an 18 inch, a 20 inch? Is he going to have an OEM steel? Will it be an Oregon? Will it be a Forester? Will it be a Neotech? Stay tuned to find out. Damn it. That's garbage, 100%, neighbors. Uh, so he'll have an aftermarket filter, not an OEM, because the OEMs are like uh, three limbs and your firstborn child. And uh, I don't think Rob Weaver wants to pay that. I think he'd prefer an aftermarket. Rob Weaver, do you want to pay Sarah and two of your other children? I cannot recollect what other children you have. So sorry, neighbor. Um, damn, I smell horrible rancid gas. I hate when I get rancid gas. Uh, so that's garbage, neighbors. Now, please understand, we want to harvest this, okay? That does come out. And we want to harvest this and this stuff because... Those components on aftermarkets often suck. And so I'll get the aftermarket filter. And all I want on the aftermarket is this part and this part. It comes with another thing in here that you've got to tear out. So I usually use the OEM components on my aftermarket filters. Does it take time? Yes. Do I always do it? No. But that's what it is. Okay. So now in order to get our top cover off, it does look like it's going to be T27s on the top here. I've got my, 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 my Milwaukee drill neighbors. I bought me some 3 inch drill bits, a bunch of, a 10 pack of T27 3 inch. I cannot find them, neighbors. I do not where they know where they went. And so for now, we have to use this. I'm trying to clean my screw head here. Uh, so it's easier to get out. And that did not work. It doesn't always work. We use a pick. Um, if it's an OEM steel screw, it can definitely handle this pick, the soft metal pick, hitting it like this without damaging the bolt head. It is very much worth it to do that. Okay. Uh, the other thing is, you know, I don't have my phone to print my little stickers to put what my screws are, but it's an 028 and I know the screws fairly well. Man, this gas stinks. I've got to get the rancid gas out of this thing. These collar screws are often tied. I have an 8 mil wrench somewhere that fits this that I've got to find. Um, I have an 8. It's an 8 open-ended, 8 on one side, open-ended 10 that I've lost. But this is an 8 mil. So make sure I'm going the right way here, lefty-loosey. There we go. See that, neighbors? Sometimes your scrunch does not take your bolt out. You need a wrench, not a scrunch. Does that make sense? Try saying that a thousand times fast, or even five times fast. You need a scrunch, not a wrench. You need a scrunch, not a wrench. I gotta add more to it, I guess. We'll see if we can make that longer during the video. Like this freaking collar bolt is long as hell. There it goes, neighbors. Steel has done me dirty, and they've changed the design of this bolt, actually. So, we'll put that in with our other two top cover bolts in order to take our top cover off our 028. We need to remove our splock, bleh, bleh, spark plug wire, okay? Now, you can shimmy that off with the spark plug. It does. It is designed to go, okay? Um, no, I can't say that it's designed to go, but it does go. Oh, damn. This thing is filthy and vile and dirty and disgusting, neighbors. Okay, you just got to work it back like that. Remove that. Pretty dirty. Look at the cleanness. But we're not using that. But it's still got to get washed. So we'll put it in there. Okay, now we got to remove our spark plug. Get it the hell out of here. I don't recommend you hit it like that, you guys. Um, I'm disabled. I have to sometimes. I'm hurting. I don't want to fight with trying to wrench on it. Okay. So 
I hit it. So these are the things I want to look at because I want an idea as I start to take this guy's saws apart, what his spark plugs look like and everything. The saw's been sitting a couple of years, but when I look at that, I'm thinking, boy, that saw looks like it's been run both rich and very lean. Very rich and very lean. All this around here tells me rich condition. When I look at the white um, and the burnt, the burnt light, light brown back there, it's not tan. It's like a burned brown. There's a difference between the tan color we want and the burned brown. I'll look at that and I'll think he, he, he didn't necessarily tune his saws properly. So I have no idea what our top end will look like, but we'll keep going. Um, I don't necessarily care about the top end on this because Rob Weaver has paid for a Meteor 028 super conversion. So essentially, it's okay if the top end's bad. Damn. Okay, let's see. I don't have one marked recoil. So we'll just put those there. Uh, the older O28s only have three bolts on the recoil. That's one of the things that's different about an older model. And these drill bits, I wish I had... Uh, I got to get me one of those. This is great. I really should try this out and see if I can make it work with this drill right now. It's set up for impact, but... Um, because essentially I don't have to twist my arm certain ways that I don't want to. Yeah, it works with this drill. I like it. I figured it would. I haven't used it very much because, like Kyle said, you do have to hold this part. Otherwise, it spins. I'll show you. Oh, it doesn't with this one. Shocking. It spins a little bit, but with the impact, you absolutely... It's rate, rated for an impact. You 100% have to hold it there while you pull the trigger. Or the damn thing will just spin by itself. Okay, uh, ugly ass recoil. There's going to be three flatheads in there. And we do need to remove this to clean it. Okay, uh, so I will remove those. Um, let me pause you real quick, damn it. So essentially all we did was remove our three flatheads. Okay. One, two, three. To remove that because we want to clean all that out. Look at the dead stink bug. Should I have left that on and sent all the shit to my neighbor that paid a high dollar price for his saw to be redeemed? No, I should not. That would be filthy, vile, dirty, and disgusting to do subscriber neighbor Rob Weaver like that. Rob Weaver... Do you think I should have left this on and just try to kind of clean around it best I could? Or are you appreciative of the fact that I've taken the shit off to remove all this shit from both sides, neighbor? Because airflow from your flywheel is crucial. And if I leave that shit on, it is 100% desiring to build up more and seek, kill, and destroy your chainsaw by preventing air from going through here and blowing around your fins to cool everything off whilst your chainsaw runs. Tell me what you think in the comments, neighbors, because again, YouTube is not letting people see my videos because they don't have enough comments on them, and so they think people don't like them. That's what they think, neighbors. That's what their algorithm tells us. Okay, so let me get this damn dirt off the bench. My good thing is, neighbors, that because there's like 30 of you that watch every single damn video all the way, uh, the view hours you guys are racking me up. Are amazing because you guys watch my long ass videos and then comment on them. Uh, not all of you comment, but I know there's like 30 of you. I see the analytics that like just keep watching my chit all the way through. I love it. Thank you, neighbors. Okay, let's see if this drill will take its coil off. I doubt it. I can't even get into that bolt. Damn, Woo, that one's real dirty. Hard deposits. I was hoping I could get my drill to put it down in there, but nope, this one's dirty. So is this one. Very filthy and dirty. Damn. Very dirty. His saws are, are very dirty. They're clearly very abused. Uh, and not properly taken care of. I mean he, he did have a big shop. And he had a lot of nice stuff. But clearly this part at least. No oh, that's not going to come off with that. Uh, this part at least is not properly taken care of. Should we try it with the actual impact? So you can see what the hell we mean. Okay, Kyle, it's doing us dirty. It will spin all the way, you guys, I promise you. Maybe my battery's dead. I don't know. Okay, let's see what we can do here. That is beautiful, though. Just push down on it. I don't have to twist weird ways. I don't mind as long as I can hold the saw and shit. I do like this. I want to get one of those Milwaukee's that are just a right angle. You don't have to have this $25 extra a, a behemoth tool. But it's cool. I appreciate it. 
Hey, Rob Weaver. Um, I was thinking of areas I could use these Nipix on your saw since you've donated them. I used the hell out of these pliers. Thank you, Rob Weaver. You were right. They did grow on me. Okay, neighbor. Whatever. You were right. I'll be humble and admit it. Damn it. Um, when I first got them, I saw the metal wear. And the metal did wear. I have to say, that is a challenge for me. Um, I was not happy about this shit. You see that shiny spot? That is one of these teeth wore on a bolt that Kyle and I removed from a 391 top of him that was broken off. Okay. They wore on me trying to grab that broken threaded bolt. Uh, the first time I used them. That's why I said I don't know in the very first video where I thanked you, Rob Weaver. Uh, that has worn out. I wonder if Nipix, you think, Rob Weaver, they'll replace these. Because I really like these pliers, but that really does piss me off they did that. I wonder if it was a quality control issue or uh, their metal isn't hard like it should be. Because neighbor Mike said, oh, Nipix, those are badass. Uh, I'm surprised they haven't put regular pliers out of business. If more people knew about them, they probably would. Okay, Rob Weaver, no matter what, your sprocket, rim sprocket, uh, is garbage, neighbor. So, this chain brake is engaged. Let's go ahead and remove this little bit of stuff. Again, the top end, I am curious what it looks like, but we're not reusing it. So, I don't have to be devastated if it's all blown up. Um, Yeah, that needs replaced. That, to me, is somebody that didn't replace wearable parts on their saw. He probably didn't run it a ton, but uh, it, it needs replaced. Okay, so this is pennies for my neighbor down the street. Uh, I give neighbor Eddie down the road my pennies, my scrap metal, even though I could scrap it in and get money. I'll give it to him because he asked me, can I have your pennies, please, because we need them. I said, of course you can, neighbor. I need them, too, but shit, if you want them, and it will make your life. Oh, this has got the smaller damn clip, and my little sir clip. Freaking pliers don't work on these. I hate it. It's got these teeny tiny holes and I haven't been able to find. Does anybody know? There's my 8 and 10 open wrench. Does anybody know? Can you help me find the right pliers for the chip? They're supposed to be these to where it opens when you squeeze closed. But mine, all my top, I have five attachments to these. And all of them are too big for some of the 028 clips. They work on most of the 028 clips, but some of them have smaller holes. Can y'all neighbors help me find the right ones? Send me a link. Because even with these, they don't fit, damn it. These are regular pliers, but usually I can grab it. Okay, there's uh, one other way to do this, and I hate doing it, but... We will uh, work it up little by little by getting in here our scrunch okay and then I will take a little screwdriver and I'll lift up on our clip if I can usually I can get under it okay there we go and essentially what you have to do realistically is you have to work this thing holding it up in one spot off of this ring the whole time you can't let it slip back down. You've got to pry it out at every spot and up at the same time. All whilst not letting it slip back down into its groove. It's hard, but it's the only way to do it without the tool. And you can ruin your clip. I do have more of these clips, which is good. My shit's wanting to go back down in, see? It's wanting at the beginning to go back down in. Okay, there we go. Almost there, neighbors. Not everybody has specialty tools. Sometimes you got to work with what you got. I don't know why I don't have the right pliers, but I forgot I didn't because I haven't had a clip like this on an 028 in a while. It's right here. Some of them have really small holes. I can probably drill those holes bigger. I've never thought about it. I think I will try on his saw. I think we'll give that a whirl on this saw, neighbors. Okay. There's that and that and that. So now that that's off, we can take our dust cover off uh, in order to remove uh, our sprocket and stuff. Okay. Boy, this saw is filthy, vile, dirty, and disgusting, neighbor's chip. And the problem is it's wet, dirty, so I really... The compressor's going to kick on. I'll have to pause you. Oh, chip. Dirt and eye. That's why you wear safety glasses, damn it. I do myself dirty and don't put them on all the time. Chip, I should learn my lesson. Safety glasses. Neighbors, don't be stupid like me. Okay, I'm blowing up the bolt head. I'll 
Applause, yeah. Okay, are you still there, neighbors? Fatty Buntings has come in. Hello, Fatty Buntings. How are you, neighbor? Would you like to say hello, neighbors? Here she is. There's my Fatty Buntings. Hello, neighbor. This is what we do at the shed shop, neighbors. We let you see. There's my 361 Nightmare that had a mystery third clip. There's the 575. They've both been through a tank. Haven't cut with them yet. Here we are, neighbors. You get back on the bench, damn it. Okay, let's go ahead and take our dust cover off. Uh, I cannot recollect. I think we'll have to take our plate off to get the dust cover. <clears throat> I think some steel 028s, we can do that. This cover without that plate, but I think some of them you cannot. Daddy Buntings is eating remnants of her bone that she has buried outside. There's little flakes of the marrow and the skin that got baked on on the floor. <laughs> She's eating them. She's spoiled, neighbors. Super spoiled. Gets a new toy like every other day. Uh, gets bones and treats and everything every day, all day. Gets fed too much. Why? I don't quite know. Okay, this screw is being dirty to us. Oh, here we go. Do you know these screws are like $2.98 a piece for the right one? I haven't found one of my local hardwares that has um, a flathead. I can do a Phillips, but I don't like doing them. It's soft metal. And to me, it's just not somewhere. I want to sell somebody a soft metal screw, so I pay that $2, damn it. I don't know why. Okay. Now, the other thing is I also, right here, so we don't lose that chip. That chip has to go back in. So I know exactly where it goes for now because I don't have the label maker up and I'm not bagging the dust cover. Or, I'm sorry, the guy plate. And that will go in our box of parts to wash. We'll go ahead and take our uh, dust cover off here and then there's going to be this little washer here. And there's all kinds of different designs. So if you buy this washer, damn it, neighbors, pay attention. There's stars, there's circles, there's these little notched outs. Pay attention. Look at the pictures of what the hell you're buying, okay? All right, so all that will go in the box. Um, I need to get an additional glove on. This one is ripping, and the saw is filthy and dirty. And I'm trying to stay as clean as possible aside from my shirt. Uh, the spur gears, worm gear, everything looks in good condition. The drum of the sprocket looks in good condition. There is a, a high amount of oil back here. Uh, puddles of it. Look at all that. Holy shit, neighbors. Should we get some towels? I mean, puddles of oil. Uh, not unusual for an 028, but we'll put a brand new, a Pharmatech, uh, oil pump gasket on for him. And we'll verify that the oil pump itself doesn't leak. Usually they don't on the 028. They're pretty good. It's usually behind them that leaks. Okay. Let's, uh, go ahead and get our drum off. Yeah, our drum is, is reusable, but again... This will probably go in the 028 parts bin because I believe we have a brand new. I don't want to grab it. Actually, yes, I do. A brand new. Let's see here. I guess I'll have to edit this part out whilst I'm over here, huh, neighbors? So I don't have to waste your lives. Here it is. We've got a power mate, Oregon power mate, three ace. I believe we discussed three ace rim sprocket for him. Uh, a little bit of surface rust, but it's brand new. Okay, new old stock. I think that's what we're putting on his saw. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and put that in his new bin with his meteor top end uh, and his highway crankshaft seals. And I'll have to see what the hell neighbor Jesse said because he only has the clutch side bearing. Um, needle cage bearing is actually in really good condition. I have brand new OEMs, but for now, we'll put it in there. We might reuse it. Okay, there's his gears. In the box. I know this saw fairly well. Are we going to have a nightmare clutch, neighbors? Should we find out? Should we just... uh? Let's go ahead and rip the band-aid off. Is our clutch going to be an asshole nightmare piece of shit or not? Let's get our three-quarter socket and find the hell out. Neighbors, are you ready? It really should be a 19 mil. This socket's worn out. Um, I have a 19 mil here. I'd like to see if it fits better. It is a half inch drive though. It does not fit better. I never quite know what the hell size they made this. Because nothing ever fit right. Okay, let's see. Righty tighty. Lefty loosey. Except it's reverse threaded. So we're going righty loosey this time. No, I hear motor turning. 100%. 100%. I was hoping it'd break right off real quick. Okay, so let's get rope. 
Uh oh. I got a double knot in this one. But I'm going to use it still. Okay. Because it's got a big knot. Again. Uh, right is loose. You know what I should have done? Jonathan Luna. Are you there, neighbor? I still need you to buy me more of this shit so I can uh, pay you for it, neighbor. Or your brother or whoever's going to that damn co-op you get this iron guard from. It's half going already because uh, it's great. Uh, I'm going to spray the clutch, guys, and we're going to move on somewhere else for now. So you'll have to wait to see. Is this going to be another nightmare clutch that I have to cut apart and replace? Uh, the springs seem in actually really good condition, surprisingly, for an 028. Usually those clutches are floppy as hell. Uh, so that's impressive. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside for now. Uh, we'll go ahead and get our oil pump out of here. And find out, does this still have uh, oil in it? I never did look. I always forget to dump my fluids before I bring us all in my shop. Not always, but usually. Let's see, neighbors. I do like this 90 degree thing that I got for $20 at the tractor supply. Do I get paid for saying all that shit? No, neighbors, I don't. Uh, okay. Yeah, it still has oil in it. It's oozing oil. Well, chit, we did ourselves dirty, didn't we? Okay, I'll get a bag to put this shit in. For now, anyways, because we got an ultrasonic kit. Where's my little bags? Chit. Sorry, neighbors. Yep. I better get uh I better get that oil drained out, damn it. Okay. Let me pause you. Misa do locks when I find the metal chains on the old chainsaws and that the cap is not completely destroyed with tool marks. Uh, this one is still good. That that oil tank was right full. So I'm guessing the gas tank is right full of rancid gas. It is pouring out where we don't have a tank vent. So, per the usual of an 028, no tank vent on the damn saw. Because they rot and fall off. Those old plastic ones with the set screws in them. There's how much oil was in our saw. And essentially, since it's waste fluids, I can pour my gas in there too. And I can already tell you 100%. Good thing I've got new seals for this cap. I don't have the oil ones. I need to get some, damn it. But these, don't replace that. And it seeks, kills, and destroys your... Oh, wow. Brown gas. Damn, y'all get your mask on, quick. Damn. Ditch it is stinky. Will it fit in the jar? Look how nasty that is. It's not all going to fit. Chit. Okay, let me go dump this in the drain pan. I'll pause you. Maybe. Chit. My gloves are filthy and dirty. I've been trying to rack my brain and remember the guy's name that I purchased these salts off of because he's got that badass blue truck. I'll have to look on the videos. Uh, we definitely want to go see him. Okay, for, for now, number one, because of the smell. And number two, because I don't want the tank getting any dirtier than it needs to be. I'm going to put the cap back on. But we definitely have to, uh, lots of rancid gas making me sick. We definitely have to take care of that shit. Okay, our coil is filthy, vile, dirty, and disgusting. We'll unhook our wire back here with our needle nose. Okay, right here, neighbors. Okay, pull that right out. And then we can pull it up through this grommet. I recommend you take this grommet out. I do have a new one if it breaks. Um... Depending on how you're cleaning your saw. I use solvent and it's not always good on rubbers. So I try to always remove all the rubber stuff. <clears throat> if I can. This one is stiff. Damn. <clears throat> yeah, it did rip. Okay, we'll have to replace it. It is very stiff. I have a feeling all his saws, all the rubbers will have to be replaced. Because they've been sitting neglected. Yeah, it's ripping 100%. Okay, so essentially... I think our wire has caught behind our carburetor here. So let's get an 8 mil and we'll remove our carburetor, which needs 100% rebuilt. And I'm most likely determining, or based on how rancid that gas was, I'll just go ahead and even do uh, welch plugs in this carburetor. And if I do, I'll try to show you guys how the hell we do that. Um, I use tools, specialty tools. You don't have to, but I do. Uh, our throttle cable we can just pull our trigger hold our lever on our carburetor and usually our throttle cable will come right off not always but usually there we go okay and then we need to hold our impulse holes back here because it's not going to want to come off our carburetor whilst we pull our carburetor or pry it if you have to i mean on this old chit chit gets stuck 
I'm replacing all my rubbers and stuff, so I don't really care. Uh, his impulse hose will possibly get replaced too in take boot. If if it's bad, they do not make anymore a lot of the rubbers. And I don't like using aftermarket uh, intake boots ever, ever, ever. I don't like them. I've never found one I like. I don't care if Armatech, anybody. I don't like them compared to OEM. There's too much plastic in them. I've seen them melt too much, damn it. So anyways, then we got to unhook our, our filthy vial fuel line. Close your eyes and make sure you don't get sprayed. There's our carburetor we've harvested. These fuel lines, they don't make any more either. They do make aftermarket. Look how stretchy that is. So bad. Disgusting. Filthy. Vile. Garbage. Many people would have tried to tune that saw up and left that shit for you. Neighbors, I don't do that. That's that's dirty. That's wrong. Okay. Ow. That was stiff too. There's our, uh, our uh, thing. Majigger. Doohickey bobber. Okay. There's our other grommet. The famous 028 leak behind the carburetor set up. And not so are you there, neighbor? You know what I'm talking about. Damn it, all the blowback bullshit. I looked at the air leaks behind these things. Couldn't solve it still. Okay, there's that. For now, I'm going to leave our ground wire on. It's in condition. I have new OEMs if we needed it. And maybe I will just put one on there. Who knows? All right, next, our flywheel. Uh, 13 mil. Actually, I think it's half inch on this one, guys. Sorry, did you dirty? Let's find out. Uh, that's a little tight. Should I grab the 13? See if that was right. 13's better. I think you could use either in a pinch and be fine. Okay. So we will just go ahead and remove our flywheel bolt because I have the flywheel puller for this all. Uh, a lot of guys, a lot of guys, um, do what I do. They'll leave that bolt on and hit the head or pry behind whilst they hit the head. Just this works for me on the 028s just fine. This is the Pharmatech one. A lot of their specialty tools, they've done me dirty and they're not good tools. But some of them are good. This one works fine. It hasn't broken at all and I've been using it a lot. I do a lot of 028s. A lot, a lot, a lot. Too many probably. In fact, honestly. Uh, so for this, you can use a socket and impact, honestly. I've never used the impact, I don't think, but essentially the important part is to hold your big part whilst you spin this part, and it is threaded into the flywheel itself. Okay, these threads on the other side have threaded into our flywheel, and you'll see that when we pull our flywheel, we'll have to unscrew this tool. Okay, so we've tightened that. Right there, and essentially what we want to do is go right a tidy on this bolt whilst we hold this one. Boom, just like that. Uh, this thing does with just a couple of turns, even with a hand wrench. Pull that right off, and then this should usually it comes off pretty easily. Simple as that. And so um, that takes me just about as long on this model, anyways, uh, as pulling the flywheel. Now we are removing crankshaft seals, but I'm not doing that until we go to put new ones in because for the cleaning process That will protect my bearings if we're not going to replace them um, I would like to replace them simply to show you guys how to do it on this saw Because it's for a subscriber neighbor uh, One hour and eight minutes. Wow. However uh, I cannot promise um, If I cannot get them OEMs are way too much and I don't think Rob Weaver cares about paying for OEMs if the ones in here are uh, perfectly legitimately legitimately fine. Okay, so let's go ahead and get a flathead. Get our wrap handle off. Okay. And now, Rob Weaver, are you there, neighbor, still? Of course you are. It's your saw, damn it. You found time to watch this at some point at your bench whilst you tinker. Uh, see, I take footage, so I don't get to watch YouTubers whilst I tinker anymore very much since I started taking a lot of footage. It's okay, though. It's worth a sacrifice because I love you neighbors, and I like taking the footage. And some days I just don't because I don't want to. <laughs> and so uh, it's all about balance and compromise and sacrifice in the right ways. Uh, anyways, um, Rob Weaver, the other saw has the metal handle with no vinyl on it. 
you can pick either one. I was surprised Eric wanted a full metal handle. He didn't want one with the plastic vinyl wrap or whatever on his 028 Super. Uh, so you tell me what you want, neighbor, and uh, we will do it. If you want this one, you get this one. If you want the full metal one without this wrap on it, you can have it. I like these better. I think the metals look cooler. However, man, you know, sometimes it's more about I don't want discomfort to look cool. I want to be comfortable and still look cool with my 028 Super Twin to the one I own now. So there's that. Okay. Uh, has anybody been curious about if we're going to get to this top end ever? I'm curious. Let's pull our muffler and then we'll pull our top end. Screw it. Okay. And that might be the end of the video and I'll tear the rest down without you guys just to get it done quickly. Okay. No, nope, that's not going to work. I was hoping I could use this right angle for the muffler too to try it out on hard bolts, but I can't see. Bolts are too dirty. I need my light on my, my drill. Pretty loose, surprisingly. That one weren't. It was loose, but... Okay, so we'll pull our muffler face off. Take our two inside bolts out. Very loose. I mean, very, very loose for muffler bolts. I'm kind of surprised. Very loose. Almost like this thing has been pulled off recently. Very, very loose bolts. Should we see what the hell it looks like in here? I can't see, damn it. Where is the flashlight? Neighbors, I don't see it. Should we use this light? Even though it means you can't see, only I can. Maybe it doesn't mean that. Oh, yeah, it looks good, neighbors. We got a good top end here, I think. Okay, should we pull it off to be be sure? Let's see how this drill works. Oh, is it not going to be a skip? Yes, it is. It fits the 028 regular. Excellent. Uh-oh. It doesn't want to go on this bolt. Because it's dirty, damn it. There we go. Almost there, neighbor shit. There we go. That's it. Let's see what this saw uh, looks like. Neighbors, what's it going to offer us? Damn. Okay. Come on, baby. Come on off of there. I know you've been on there a long time, but shit. Okay, let's get our intake boot through. I am going to use a screwdriver. I don't love doing it, but for now, I know that's my best option, the way my pain and everything else is, and I just have to be real careful. Okay, there we go. Excellent. Yeah, that looks great. Wow. Looks fantastic, aside from the, the heavy carbon buildup on the top. Uh, this is a good top end. It looks beautiful, guys. I'm very happy. Excellent. You know why I'm very happy? Because I'm really hoping the 038, <laughs> the other 028, and the 064 all look like this chit right here. Neighbors. That is beautiful. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. So happy. So happy. Excellent. 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 Because I have been led to believe this guy told me the damn truth. I really do. This guy had money. He had no reason to lie about his stuff. Okay. He, he wasn't asking a ridiculous price. He was fair. Okay. Now I have this tool that I can put under my piston right now. Okay. And I have a wood one too. I just, I made a wood one that fits the 028 here actually okay the problem with this is when these clutches are stuck those things can break the piston can break but we're going to try it just once with our impact again and uh our socket and see if that chit wants to come off or not okay it does not oh it does not uh, I need to get a better damn socket, damn it. Okay, uh, this is a half inch. I do not have a half inch adapter for my impact. But I do have a half inch socket we can draw. Or a half inch ratchet. My uncle's got the breaker bar in his truck. He's at work. Because he works over nuts. Sometimes, apparently, so do I. And essentially, neighbors, I have been having clutch nightmares. I've had to cut clutches off a lot lately. 
I don't know why. Um, but I have, I've had clutches that just refuse to come off no matter what you do. Even half inch impacts won't take them off. We've had to cut clutches, uh, to get good grips on shit. Damn it. Essentially, I'm trying to get it. I don't want it sitting back there. Okay. So, let's see what we can do with a half inch ratchet. Me and my uncle might have to uh, fight a clutch. <clears throat> it's not going to come off. Fuck, man. I hate when this happens. <sighs> and it hurts, too. This really does hurt me while trying to get these things off. Okay, neighbors, let's see. Uh... I'm looking for this right now to see. It's not going to fit um, my... I'm sorry, I have semi-deeps. And I want to see if it'll fit so that I have a little bit better leverage. I don't think it does, but I can't recollect. Uh, this, the ratchet's not going to go on all the way. That's the problem. It won't go on all the way. It will not. Damn. I can still use it, but then my ratchet is pivoting where it doesn't want to pivot. Yeah, my piston's digging into my wood. Which means it will break. Shit. <sighs> Sorry, neighbors. This is a little bit frustrating, honestly. <sighs> okay. We'll get it. Maybe not tonight. I think my piston is going to break. I don't want to break my piston, damn it. I'm tired of cutting clutches, breaking pistons, everything else. This is all money when this shit happens. There we go, neighbors. I think it came. It did. <sighs> That's what we do. We just say, okay, whatever, King Jesus, fine. We'll just lose more money. And then our clutch comes off. You see that, neighbors? I'm surprised that this clutch springs are not destroyed. Almost all 028s. Uh, they'll need replaced. Yeah, they're loose. Okay. I was going to say, because that's usually what they do. You can just push the clutch right apart. Because the springs are stretched out. They stretch. They're a wearable part. You got to think those things are under massive force when this thing goes non-stop. And then those springs are stretched for hours at a time when your saw is running and cutting and stuff. Those springs are stretched out under full fucking force, uh, under full tension. And so they're a wearable part. You need to replace them. Uh, you should replace those every few years if you use your chainsaw a lot. I only charge $25 to get in there on this model and do that chip plus your parts. Okay, that's if that's all you're having done. Okay, that's too low, I know, but that's all I charge. If your clutch isn't a nightmare like that one, then I increase your bill because that was a nightmare. <sighs> okay, so for now, um, how far are we in, neighbors? We are deep in one hour and 18 minutes. Uh, the last things we need to do are his brake parts, and they're not too hard. Okay, uh, you have to be careful, but you can pop the spring off back here. I do have the special removal tool that steel makes, but it's really just a specially shaped pry thing like a scrunch. Okay, come off there, neighbor. Do you mind? There we go. Whoops, chip. They usually don't fly, but that one did apparently want to go flying. No big deal wasn't bad okay so we got that off and then our chain brake band should just lift out okay right here you can just grab it i thought it did is there a bolt on this one there's not okay it's just in there tight yep very tight oh damn oh, yeah okay it's in there damn Let 
Okay. Oh, I'll have to work that out, you guys. That 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 one's gonna be tough. Okay, it doesn't want to come out. Should we try our nitpicks? Rob Weaver. What do you think, neighbor? Here you go. You ready? Let me show you a trick because I can't do this with my needle nose. They slip off. It's coming, neighbors. The nitpicks are holding up. Ha 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 ha. There's your nitpicks, Rob Weaver. <laughs> They've come through again. Do you like it when your saw neighbor that I used your donated tool, the tool you donated to the shed shop and said Chainsaw Redeemer, I think these will benefit your life. <laughs> Let me buy you some. Thank you, Rob Weaver, for your donation. I like my nitpicks. I really do. Ah, oh, Chip, my glove has done me dirty again. Amazon, your cheap gloves, I do not think are actually 5 mil. I think you're liars. They rip way too easily for 5 mil thick. All right, there's that. C-clip or, or E-clip, I think they call it, actually. And then there's an E-clip here. Okay. And then this assembly should... Um, you should be able to take your chain brake band assembly up off. Maybe. It's all gooped up. Okay, like that. Okay. It separates from your handle. Slides off the two pins. Okay, don't lose your washer. Sorry, neighbors. Uh, that will be under there like like so, okay? And that's it. Okay, there's our chain brake parts. And then this, this will come off, but be careful. There's a spring behind this handle. It usually stays in place, but if you're taking your saw all the way apart, you need to remove it so you don't lose it, okay? Because it will fall out. It'll stay in place when you pull that usually, but it will fall out once you tip that saw to its side. If I did this right now, that spring 100% is going to fall out. And then we've got our washer. It covers our crankshaft seal, which surprisingly, I almost guarantee you, these damn crankshaft seals are good. I'm looking at that damn thing, and it looks perfectly fine. Although, it's set in a little deep. It looks perfectly fine, but we're replacing them anyways. Um, we have highways, and that's what we're putting in. Brand new highways are better than 30-year-old used OEM. Okay, that's my theory anyways. I don't know. What do you neighbors think? Chip, I never ask you guys enough what the hell you think. Okay, here's my chain brake parts. I'm going to put it with a spring since I don't have my label maker. So write my little labels. That way I will know what the fuck they are. Sorry about the F-bomb. Did my other E-clip go in there? It did not. Where the hell did you go, neighbor? These are to my muffler. Okay. And then I've got this. I was looking for my little E-clip. I don't know where it went. To my brakes. I got one. We need two. Has it stuck to my washer? It has disappeared, neighbors. Uh, it fell in with our nuts back here for our bar. Okay, our bar nuts. Okay, there's our chain brake band. Throw that in our box of parts to be washed. Same with our spring. I would normally put the spring in here. Uh, matter of fact, I will. Okay. Um... And then I, I, I like these only when this shit's clean, but essentially I have decided I'm going to try. This is my first time trying it. All the hardware in this and then fill this with a fluid. And even though I have to turn it two ways, uh, put it in my small ultrasonic parts washer because that's how I wash my hardware is in my ultrasonic. And so essentially then this will be clean. I can drain the fluid and spray everything because I use Simple Green. Spray everything to prevent corrosion with uh, brake parts cleaner. Leave the lid open, the brake parts cleaner will evaporate, and then my hardware will all be clean. I'm hoping that's a process that will uh, eliminate some of the time I put into cleaning hardware. Because uh, I have seen, though it might only be like 3-5% to 5 of the time, I've seen just little freaking speckles of dust and stuff destroy saws. They get down in your top end because you have to work in a dirty environment. And I've seen it happen. They, they just score up your intake side just enough that you get uh, a saw that won't idle right. And runs too rich and gets blowback real bad and everything else. And so I, I do try to clean my hardware because I don't like my saws to get messy while I assemble them. I don't always do it, but 99% of the time I do. On, on saws that I'm redeeming, I do. Anyways. Okay, right now I'm just trying to get my intake boot off. Because again, we will ultrasonic bath this motor. And we want this intake boot completely off because we need to inspect this thing very closely make sure there's no pinholes in it 
Ooh. And then also, because that's right, we need to get our head bolts too. Our jug bolts here. Okay. Because we need them for our 028 super top end. Duh. That's right, neighbors. Does anybody want to buy an 028 top end from a one owner saw? Allegedly one owner. Would you like to? Let me know. Um, I don't think I have any more cable rings for it, but I'm, I'm guessing those rings are probably just fine, neighbors, honestly. Okay, there's that. That's going to be set aside. The piston will have to be removed and set aside. And then the final thing we really have is I've got a bunch of flatheads to remove, unfortunately, neighbors. But actually, is that really that unfortunate? How will this work? How do flatheads work with this thing? Flatheads are a nightmare no matter what you do with a drill. I very rarely use a drill in flatheads. I'm struggling to see if I'm being honest. No problems there. Okay, and then we've got to pop this little thing out. And essentially, as long as you're careful, you don't want your screwdriver to slide around if you use your threads to get it out. But you, yeah, like I just did, but you can. Okay, this one is in there tight. The idea is to get that little tab up and get behind it. But it's not always easy. There we go. Okay, and I, I believe I have OEM AV mounts if we need to replace them. I'm not quite sure. We'll find out. Excellent. I like it. There's that. Okay. Now we got to flip over. We got another one here and here we've got to remove. And then essentially our tank should come off. Okay. And then that'll be basically, that'll wrap the video for there. That'll be done for this all. I'll have to remove the piston, as I said, but in the spike. But y'all don't need to be here for that shit. You didn't need to be here for any of it. Rob Weaver said, I don't care about the footage, neighbor. I really don't. He says, I'm not here to get my saw on footage. He says, I just want to buy your saws and give my uh, 028 a twin brother. Because he's been asking me for years if I could get him a twin. And so I said, Rob Weaver, you are worth the extra work it takes to put into the footage. I will get as much as your saw as possible on footage, neighbor. And that's what I told him. And so that's what we're doing, neighbors. Even though it's an hour and 30 minutes long, and I don't know how much I'll actually cut out. Probably not much, if I'm being honest, neighbors. Why? Because like 30 of you watch basically every one of my videos. And so when 30 of you watch an hour and a half long video, that gets me like 45 hours of view time. And that's excellent because I still need 2,000 hours of view time uh, to get monetized and like 700 or 600 and something more subscribers. But uh, view time, we're more than halfway there almost. Well, we're almost halfway there. I'm sorry, not more than halfway. Uh, we are very near, uh, I checked like two days ago, and it was 1,900 and something hours, and I need 4,000, so we're nearly halfway there, and then you need 1,000 subscribers, and we've got 340 or 350 something, and so uh, we're a third of the way there on our subscriber neighbors, isn't that fantastic neighbors, that y'all love me that much. The challenge is I can't see this damn screw. It's full of oil. There we go. Got it. We got it. Okay, come here, screw. All right, so now we should be able to pop our AV mounts out uh, to get, or, or I'm sorry, not pop our AV mounts out. Pull our handle out of our AV mounts down here. Okay, it should come right out. Okay. And then we'll have our impulse hose still hooked up. That we'll have to unhook, but that's no big deal. Okay, we'll move our piston out of the way. 
and pop that off of our brass nipple on our crankcase. Because again, if the OEM is in very good condition, I want to reuse it because I'd rather reuse certain stuff like rubbers uh, like that, okay, in impulse boots or intake boots rather than aftermarket used. Um, uh, this rubber actually, wow, I'm shocked. <laughs> I was going to say this thing almost always, at least for me on refurbished saws, I have to replace and it's like $24 guys. Honestly, it's the most expensive uh, AV mount on this saw. But this one is uh, just, well, uh, I don't know. We'll play with it. I'll probably end up replacing it. I know me now that I feel it. But either way, um, it's not as bad as they usually are. So. Got to clean my bolt again. This is the problem with dirty saws. This is why if you bring your saw full of rancid gas and dirty like this, I might charge you more neighbors depending on my mood. Ow. Damn. When that shit happens, I'm definitely charging y'all more. Rob Weaver, your saw has decided all of a sudden to start being an asshole, neighbor. Okay, there's that. That should do our tank right there. Look how filthy that is, guys. Chit. Okay, because I again, I don't have my my damn label maker out. I don't like screwing up my screws. So, because I don't know how soon I get back to his saw again. We mark every, or we're going to put these back in uh, the chassis so we know what they are. We don't want to mix stuff up, neighbors. Okay. Otherwise, you puncture the gas tank on somebody's chainsaw like I did Cody's John Deere CS62. All by getting the wrong bolt size from the damn hardware store. Punctured his gas tank, not even knowing it. Wow, sorry, I'm getting in the cleaning mode. This thing is just filthy. Damn. This guy just really did not take care of his saws, clearly. I mean, they're not... I don't know what it's like. They're, they're super dirty, but at the same time... They're not beat up and worn out. They're just dirty. Like it's like they had a really filthy life when they were used. But they weren't used a crap ton. Um, they were just used for dirty jobs. Filthy, dirty, disgusting jobs. Look how much filth is on your saw, Rob Weaver. See how much work I had to do, neighbor. Okay. So y'all understand. All the time that was just put into this video. Why? Because Rob Weaver is a good subscriber neighbor and he deserves footage whether he wants it or cares about it or not. He's a subscriber, therefore he likes my footage. And so why wouldn't he especially like footage on his chainsaw and especially like the appreciation of me scraping dirt off his chainsaw telling you why I want to give him footage. And so again, neighbors, essentially, I am so sorry, but for you... This is the only video you're going to get until he gets his saw, okay? I'm going to flip you real quick, and then we're going to close out within like two minutes. When I do these videos, uh, these longer ones for my subscriber neighbors or for customer neighbors, uh, please understand, uh, whilst I want view hours and likes and comments and everything else, and y'all should do that chat if you're still here, my 30 that watch all my videos all the way through, or 33 of you or whatever it is I can tell by the analytics it tells me how active you guys are on the channel did you know that did you know YouTube lets me spy on my subscribers and see how frequently they're watching my videos how many view hours each one of you has uh, the ones that have public subscriptions I think maybe even the ones that don't uh boy who my pain um anyways either way this video really is it, it's it's this is for Rob Weaver um, and it's for anybody that wants to see a personal touch in a business a guy willing to expose his workbench um, and risk persecution <laughs> risk people saying you don't know what the hell you're doing I know I told y'all that in the beginning damn it I'm not a certified mechanic I'm just a guy that likes tinkering on saws and sometimes I make mistakes and I'm still learning shit I'm relearning a chip I knew 10 years ago. And Rob Weaver said, I don't care. Can I buy a saw from you? I appreciate you. You make my life better. I said, shit, you can make my life better then. Yes. 
What kind of saw do you want? <laughs> he told me. I've been talking to my 028 Super. And <laughs> wants a twin brother still. And I think I finally have been beaten into submission. I need to buy an 028 Super. And so, that's where we're at. Uh, we're going to bring you the story. Again, even if you don't see it for months, you'll see that shit. Because I'm going to edit it tonight before I go to sleep. And, and post it. And so today is essentially Sunday now, July 25th, I think, or June, I'm sorry, June 25th, 2023. Rob Weaver is a subscriber neighbor. He has purchased this saw. This saw, you can look up a short, maybe I can add it at the end screen. Uh, here's my heroin hits neighbors. This was in that lot, but again, we're putting the Meteor Top End you saw at the beginning, brand new OEM, or a brand new Meteor Top End 028 Super 46 millimeter. It has a 44 millimeter. We're changing it to a 46. That's what the Super came with. Okay. Uh, same stroke. So everything else stays the same. It's simply the cylinder and piston that change. So that's what we'll do. And then y'all will get that footage once he's got his saw. Okay. Um, you have my word once he has a saw that anything that's in my control to bring you the footage, it will be brought. But until then, this is all you will get. So basically that's it neighbors this is very long i'm gonna finish up my last little tiny bits of stuff i got to do with this and then maybe i'll do another one maybe i don't um i'm probably gonna go try and go to bed and trust the king of the universe um that he'll wake me up i got my 575 sticker for my 570 so i'll put that on tomorrow hopefully and cut some more with that in the 361 uh change the o-rings on the 361 uh gaskets uh, our damn caps and i'll say this shit sometimes to my neighbors uh uh in my videos neighbors because it helps me it helps me remember Saying what I need to do or what I'm going to do and giving you updates. It's also for me to remember to give you good service, quality service, uh, and good products. And to keep me flowing efficiently. Even though I'm not efficient yet, I want to get there. And so it's it's part of the process. So thank you, neighbors, for all your support. Anybody besides Rob Weaver <laughs> and a few others that have watched this video all the way through. Anybody else that has that doesn't normally watch my long ass shit. Uh, thank you, neighbors, for hanging out. Be kind to one another. Everyone's facing a battle. Small engine redemption at gmail.com. 346 263 1077. All fucking 8 billion of you can use that info and it doesn't have to be chainsaw related. I'm just a redneck guy in the woods that's disabled trying to make ends meet and bring kindness to the world in whatever way I can. So if you need somebody to talk to, there's your outlet. Okay, I love all 8 billion of you, damn it. Let's keep persevering, neighbors.